My name is Jenny Pratt, and I am the VP of Customer Success at visual marketing and software company Dash Hudson. Um, thank you all for joining me here at the end of day two. I'm really excited to dig into the pivotal role that data plays in creative decision making in this rapidly evolving space of visual marketing. I do realize that it's the end of the day, so I'm going to keep the energy up. Um, we're even going to play a game later on. Um, but to kick things off, um, I thought I'd share a bit more about myself and how I came to be speaking here with you all today. So my story begins on the east coast of Canada. Any east coasters in the room? Yes. Um, I do a lot of these presentations in the US, so I feel like a lot of the time they have no idea where Nova Scotia is, so um, that's nice to hear. Um, so I was fortunate enough to grow up and also attend university um, on the East Coast. And I actually did my undergrad in science, but after a brief internship at a nutraceutical company, I realized that my passion lay more on the business side of things. So I then did an MBA and fast forward a couple of years to 2015, I found myself working at a very tiny startup in Halifax with only five people at the time called Dash Hudson. So today, Dash Hudson is the world's leading visual marketing software. We help brands to create, measure, and predict the performance of content, see trends, enhance engagement, and distribute content across channels like Instagram, Pinterest, and in ads. We're fortunate to work with some of the top brands in the world, including names like Sephora, Apple, and Revolve. But things haven't always been this way. So let's rewind a few years back to May of 2015 when Dash Hudson was an e-commerce shopping app. So we were, we were one of a number of brands at the time trying to make it in the space. And um, it was very saturated. Um, essentially what the um, two co-founders wanted to do was take organic lifestyle imagery from visual social media channels like Instagram and use that to sell products online. At the end of the day, it wasn't the best business model, but something did come from it. Our CEO and co-founder, Thomas, um, when he was looking at trying to understand the relationship of the performance of that content on Instagram and how that translated into sales, he noticed that there was a bit of a gap in terms of data available. So we asked our CTO, Tomac, to build an internal dashboard. And that internal dashboard became much more interesting and marketable. Um, so August of 2015, uh, we launched our Instagram analytics platform. And this solved something that many brands at the time um, were struggling with, which was a lack of deep, actionable insights when it came to visual content, specifically on Instagram. So you might be wondering what happened between May and August of 2015. And the answer to that is something that still remains a core part of our DNA. We went back to some of those early connections that we had from when we were building the app, which happened to be some of the smartest marketers um, out there. And we asked for feedback in terms of what they would like to see in an analytics platform. So we took that feedback and we used it um, and we built what the platform is today, um, which I'll get into a little bit later on. But essentially, um, it's something that is very important to us to listen to, listen to our customers and, and use that feedback. Um, and that's the side of the business that I've been a part of. It's called customer success. Um, and when I started with Dash Hudson, customer success was a relatively new field. Uh, social media marketing was also a new field, so we grew a lot, we've learned a lot. Um, the company has gone from 10 people in 2016 to over 100 people in 2020. And we're continuing to evolve. So we, as mentioned, we are now working um, on the Pinterest side of things, in ads, and really across visual social channels um, in general. And those visual spaces are very crowded. So today, there are over 100 million photos and videos being shared each day on Instagram. So let that sink in for a second. 
This means that there are billions of visual touch points between a brand and its consumer. And this is important to note for three different reasons. The first is digital photos and videos are the main points of interaction. So it's very important to be able to stand out in this sea of content. The second is that brand value is being defined by these moments. So cohesion across channels, both organic and paid, is very important. The third point is that brands will thrive or die in this evolving world, and it will happen quickly. Currently, many CPG companies are grappling with this. Take, for example, what chief content officer at a global CPG company recently told our CEO, which was, if our content does not become sophisticated like Kylie Glossier in a way, we will lose generations X to Z. We're fortunate to work with all three of the brands that they mentioned um, and to help solve problems for them in the creative space daily. So a couple of creative challenges that we hear from the customers, our customers and brands that we work with are one, understanding what content your customers want to see. Two, choosing content that will perform and drive brand value across organic and paid channels. So these challenges exist, we believe, due to a few common misconceptions. So a few of these common misconceptions are, one, what performs well for other brands will perform well for my brand. This, of course, is not the case. Every brand has its own unique DNA, and it's very important to pay attention to this. The second is, what performs today will perform tomorrow. In the world of visual marketing, trends change so quickly. We see this with our software. Trends are changing day to day. So again, another misconception. Number three, small visual differences don't make an impact on performance. Details matter and I will prove this to you. So let's play a game. So as mentioned, um, we're gonna play a game, and uh, how it works is we've looked at five brands. Um, we've then looked at two recent posts that are very similar visually, and then from there we've looked at the engagement on those posts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two posts, and then I'm gonna ask by a show of hands, which post you think performed best. All right, so we have an influencer um, style of shot here. Influencer marketing is obviously huge in the visual marketing space, so it's very important to be able to nail these types of shots. So by a show of hands, who thinks that number one performed best? Okay, and by a show of hands, number two. So those of you that guessed two were right. Um, the difference in performance is quite remarkable. Um, so number two performed 46% better in terms of engagement than number one. The next, again, is two very visually similar images from a hair care brand. Again, back of the head, ponytail, blonde. Who, who thinks that number one performed best? All right, and number two? Okay. So number two, again. <laughs> um, I promise you it's not all number two. We do mix it up a bit. Um, but again, even more significant in terms of the difference in engagement. So number two performed 70% um, better in terms of engagement than number one. We'll, we'll get into it. I think there's time for questions after. Um, so the next is a nail shot, or nail shots. Um, so by a show of hands, who thinks number one performed best? All right, and number two. All right. So in this case, it was number one, which actually surprised me because number two is so well lit and bright, but again, clearly number one resonated with this brand's audience. Um, and again, more significantly, 76% um, more. All right, the next is looking at a sneaker brand. So, by a show of hands, number one, and number two. 
I know, I'm hearing some people. <laughs> I'm hearing the, those comments that dogs always perform best, but um, <laughs> for this specific brand, um, it was that very product-focused shot that resonated best with its audience, and quite significantly, a 95% difference there. And then one last one for all of you guys. Um, so these are two very similar images. They're campaign imagery from a cosmetics brand, um, Black Backdrop, very similar. So number one, who thinks number one performed best? All right, and number two. So in this case, it was number one. Um, it performed better by about 100% in terms of engagement. So again, details do matter. And you're probably wondering, what's the common thread here? So the answer is, it's not something I can tell you. Um, it's not something that I know. When looking at details on photos like this, it's very important to look at the data. And it's something that we were hearing a lot from brands, specifically in 2018. They wanted to test out different types of styles of content um, without having to sacrifice engagement. So, being the customer-centric company that we are, we built them a solution called Vision. So, Vision is a visual intelligence tool. It uses AI and machine learning and applies that to photos. So, essentially, it works like a human eye, where it reads things like color, tone, texture, depth of field, etc. But it picks up on thousands of these elements. <laughs> so, um, vision has been very helpful for brands in understanding the types of content that will resonate with their audience. Because vision works in this way, it also means that any content you upload into Dash Hudson is fully searchable, um, either by keyword or reverse image search. And this has saved our customers hours and hours of time um, every week. Another use case for vision is through um, prediction. So we help brands to predict what content will perform um, based on those elements that are in the photo, as well as their own unique historical content performance. So you'll see three indicators at the bottom of this photo here. Um, you'll see a star, an upward arrow, and a downward arrow. So when you upload content into Dash Hudson, Vision will apply one of these to each of your photos. A star means that Vision's predicting this piece of content will perform within the top 25th percentile. An upward arrow means that Vision's predicting it will perform above average, and then a downward arrow below average. And what's really interesting here is that vision works in real time. So as your audience and their tastes evolve, vision is going to learn and evolve as well. So let's take a couple, let's take a look at a couple of um, examples of how this has worked for a few of our brands in the organic space. So I'm sure you're all familiar with Goody, um, heritage hair brand. They've been around for over 100 years. And when they started with Dash Hudson, they had less than 10,000 followers. So their main objective was to grow that audience. Using Vision, they quickly picked up on trends um, within their quote card content segment. So they were noticing that these types of pieces of content were performing really well, mainly due to the fact that their followers were tagging their friends and then those friends were following the account. Um, and then in the earned space, Goody realized that um, when looking at their user-generated content, that it was a lot of images of braids that were receiving the star indicators and the upward arrow indicators. So they took these learnings and they applied it to their creative um, content strategy. And within two years of using Dash Hudson, they were able to grow their audience by over 14 uh, over 1,400%. Um, 
Another example is with Australian apparel retailer Cotton On. So Cotton On actually brings vision to photo shoots, which is kind of interesting. So in real time, they're able to make creative decisions um, as to how they want to style content. And this is something we're actually seeing happen more and more um, with our brands. Another use case um, specific to Cotton On is they use vision selected images on their website and in email marketing, and they've noticed consistently that these vision selected images outperform the non vision selected images in terms of click through rates and sales. So the creative portion um, of marketing is something that tends to come very natural to social media teams and brand teams. But when it comes to ads, it's typically the ad copy or the targeting that receives most of the credit. That said, um, Nielsen Catalina has recently disclosed that 56% of a brand's sales lift from digital advertising can be attributed to the quality of the creative. So this leads into paid. So we've taken this concept and we've applied it to the paid space. Working with a few of our brands um, to do some recent A-B testing um, in this space, what we did was um, we used, so we worked with them through Facebook specifically, and we had them select an image, and then we used Vision to select an image to gain insight into how well Vision would perform versus what the ads team had selected. So we'll take a look at a few of these examples. So the first is jewelry retailer Kendra Scott. So here you'll see two images that are pretty similar. Um, the products in each of these Im images are similar price points. The brand selected the image on the right. Vision selected the image on the left. And when they ran that Facebook A-B test, they saw that the vision selected image performed better and provided them with a 48% increase on return um, on ad spend. And then we also did another one of these experiments with Revolve. Um, so Revolve, a well-known fashion e-tailer I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, this one was interesting because typically in the ad space we see that the very product type of shots, so the one on the right, would be something that the ads teams would gravitate towards. However, in this case, um, Vision went with the more lifestyle type of shot. And again, Vision, the Vision selected ad performed better and provided the team with an increase, um, or a 70% um, return on ad spend. So we've chatted a bit about how vision has been used to inform brands on the types of content that will resonate with their audience. But something that we have been hearing from brand, brands recently is that um, they want to know about, they want to know more about trends. Because as mentioned, trends change so quickly in this space. And they want to make sure that they're maintaining that competitive edge. So again, we've built them a solution. This is a newer product for us called Visual Trends. And what brands are able to do here is upload accounts to the platform. So examples would be maybe they want to upload accounts specific um, to their industry, or maybe they want to upload accounts that are competitors or of brands that they're aspiring towards. Vision will then provide brands with trends within these subsets. And again, vision is constantly learning, so these trends will be um, these trends will change over time as well, to provide brands with insights at that in that moment. So let's take a look at a few example a few examples of some recent trends that visual trends has surfaced. So the first is in the beauty industry. So we looked at ten beauty brands, and a trend that we are seeing right now is these types of oddly satisfying, goopy, texturized kind of images. And it's something that we have been seeing with the more indie, born on Instagram brands for the past couple of years now. But it's interesting to see this now becoming more and more of a bigger trend with, those, with the bigger beauty brands. 
Another example um, is with uh, CPG. So we look specifically at grocery brands and drugstore brands and notice that there is a trend in terms of illustration. So this is something that we've seen with publishing and um, actually within the beauty industry, again, for the past couple of years. So it's interesting to see now that it's made its way into these two areas. Um, also interesting to note that trends are always changing, but sometimes they hop between industries as well. The last one that we'll look at here is automotive. So we're definitely seeing a trend right now in terms of vintage nostalgia. And nostalgia is something that we're seeing across um, many different industries right now. It's def definitely a macro trend, but it works particularly well for the automotive industry, obviously, um, in terms of their history and getting to showcase those classic cars. Um, but that all said, we at Dash Hudson believe that as much as data can be helpful, it's very important to be able to rely on your own creative acumen as well. And it's really that the marriage of those two, of your creative acumen and data, that are going to create that marketing magic. So whether or not you're leveraging emerging technology like Dash Hudson or not, three pillars of success when it comes to um, making those creative decisions with data would be, number one, the data needs to be rich and timely. There needs to be cohesion across channels, both organic and paid. And lastly, it needs to be personalized. And beyond personalized, it also, you also need to be paying attention to those trends that are continuing to evolve. So that wraps things up for me today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. And I'll also be at the gala this evening, so definitely come and, yeah, say hi. We'll, uh, we'll do some questions now. Great. Um, so for those of you in the audience, you probably know the drill by now. Uh, but uh, please feel free to uh, pull up your uh, Twitter applications and uh, use the uh, hashtag TGS underscore dash. Uh, you don't need to tweet at us or anything like that. Just use the hashtag and we'll track down your questions from there. And uh, we will get into it. Maybe just first of all, I'd like to play a little game. How many of you got every single one of those questions wrong? Was I the only one? There's just like three of us? To four, four, yeah, I pretty much got, every, I think I got every single one of them wrong. Um, when you do that, when you, when you measure the engagement across those kinds of posts, do you, as a human, pull any, like does your team pull any sort of insights that uh, start to inform the curation of imagery? Or are you just saying, or just, do you just let the, the algorithm figure it out for you? Yeah, I mean, the algorithm is going to be much more accurate than the human eye. Again, the algorithm takes into account thousands of elements when it's reading a photo. Um, so it is going to provide more insight. And I don't, I mean, I have two team members here, and I think they could also both attest to the fact that vision is usually going to win versus a human when it comes to predicting content. Do you guys have competitions internally to see <laughs> if anybody can be, beat Vision? We, we don't, but that might be a fun game to start playing. Like maybe part of like the interview process for yeah, hiring exactly, new staff? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Scare them a bit. It, it's, uh, so when it, maybe just walk me through the process, because it's fascinating to me um, how wrong I was. Um, <laughs> Maybe just walk me through the process. Would, so you, Vision would go and look at 100 million images a day kind of thing? Like, is that yep. the extent of it? You, you look at everything that goes out onto Instagram, for example? So we wouldn't, more or less. we wouldn't look at everything that goes out onto Instagram. Um, what we look at is, obviously, any brands that connect to the platform, we would look at their content. And um, Vision is very specific to um, each brand. So when when we're predicting performance, 
for a brand's content, it is specific to their own history in terms of uh, content performance. Um, but that said, with visual trends, brands are able to upload any um, account into the platform and then from there vision does its work. But I think that if we, if we set it up for every Instagram account, um, I don't know if the system would be able to take that all at, at once. There's a lot of accounts out there. And so it, that makes sense. And then you would, so from that point on, I'm, we, we were, we're, there's lots of platforms out there that just report on how uh, content has performed, right? Yep. You guys go one step for, further, several steps yes. further, and predict what will perform really well. So yes. based off history, based off of um, trends and all that stuff, and then do I, as sort of a user, upload a bunch of potential creative and you yep. tell me, don't publish that one, that's gonna be terrible. Get yeah. rid of the dog, that thing's <laughs> stupid, go with the closer up. That was a weird one. That's so but weird, like dogs are awesome. Anyway. I know. Um, but yeah, so you would upload your own content and then any user generated content that's pulling into the platform would also have vision run through as well. Um, so it's, it's both um, organic content and then getting into the paid space as well now. And what's been really interesting is that, you kind of touched on this during the intro, but um, especially when you start to look at ads teams, there's a lot of voices in the room. And so usually it ends up being sort of a subject, subjective decision in terms of what content's going to be selected for an ad or even just organically to be posted on social media. So this kind of adds a nice third party element into the room. Um, again, definitely believe that it's important to kind of listen to your own <laughs> insights. Obviously, if you're working for a brand, um, you're gonna know that brand very well, but Vision does provide that sort of third party insight for teams. And I guess kind of gets rid of, or maybe quiets down the loud voice in the room, like the guy like me that's like, go with the dog. <laughs> exactly. Dogs can't lose, like vision sort of exactly. overrides the... Exactly, okay. But at the end of the day, I mean like, vision's gonna provide you with that insight, um, which is very helpful, especially for brands that are publishing hundreds of pieces of content um, per week. But yeah, at the end of the day, you've gotta listen to your own gut. I'm curious about the trend thing that you talked about. Yeah. Um, as one of the least trendy people that I know, um, I have I tend to jump on things right as they die. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned that vision tracks things in real time. Real time. Do you also does it also track when a trend is like kind of burning out yeah. and, and isn't as relevant anymore? Yeah, exactly. So you'll see that, especially with the visual trends section. You'll see all of a sudden those top content pillars that were sitting at the top of maybe an industry that you're looking at or a competitive subset that you were looking at. You'll notice all of a sudden they're starting to drop down and there's new trends emerging towards the top. So it does really provide brands with that competitive edge and, and make sure that they're staying current and, and up to date. It's really interesting. I've got a question here from the audience, um, and uh, great question. Talk, talk to us about how much the copy or the caption on a post um, informs the overall performance. You, yeah. Are you focused entirely on imagery, or is there like a, can you put a little bit of rocket fuel on something with the right kind of caption and that kind of thing? How, what's yeah. your take on that? Yeah, totally. So vision is specific to just the visual component of the image. However, we do provide solutions within the platform that allow brands to gain insight into these types of things. So again, for every brand, it's gonna be unique. So we definitely don't see a trend where long form captions perform best across the board or short form or keywords. You know, we don't tend to see trends across the board that way, but definitely when it comes to your own brand, um, you might notice these types of trends. Um, again, going back to your brand's yeah. DNA. Um, so the tool that we provide in Dash Hudson to help support with that is a tool called Boards. So it allows brands to manage their own content, put their content into basically um, boards or 
categories and then from there gain insight into whether or not one specific category is outperforming another and it provides brands with a little bit more flexibility in terms of going beyond just the visual component of the photo. We were uh, in this room yesterday talking about influencer marketing and um, and sort of how that industry has, or how that portion of the industry has kind of exploded and maybe crashed and then exploded again. I'm not sure where it's at right now, but um, do you do, does do, does anything that you do start to curate a little bit around uh, relevant influencers for? Uh, for brands, uh, mm -hmm. the right kinds of people, the right kinds of aesthetic yeah. from an influencer that might be a, an appropriate influencer? Totally. So again, this is, um, this is kind of outside of vision, but we do provide brands with solutions for understanding the performance of influencers. Um, it's a tool specifically called Relationship IQ, and what it does is, is it allows brands to track the performance of their influencers, so how many followers are being driven, um, to the account and the performance of um, the, those influencers' specific pieces of content engagement-wise, as well as things like earned media value attached to the content. And I think we, we had another session this morning where we talked about, um, you know, AI being a lever for um, creating more efficiencies in, a, in an agency operation or in a brand's uh, yeah. uh, operations. Um, by just making some tasks that take a lot of human manpower, very simple, and can be done by a computer in mm -hmm. moments. Um, I guess the question that I have is, uh, are there insights that you can glean from what you've seen already that somebody, like maybe a smaller brand, like not an enterprise brand in the room here, could start to pull from to inform how they uh, approach the visual creative on their platforms? Or is it really so mysterious that um, it, it actually takes a computer looking at it. Like, are there insights that you guys have gleaned that you get sh helpful tips, like without giving too much away, that you can say, try for this, try for that, or is it really just individual on a brand by brand basis? Um, it is very much brand by brand, but um, I think for whether or not you're a small brand or, or a big brand, um, it is very helpful, obviously, to have that third party um, available and to be able to have data to inform your creative decisions because that's what we're seeing the smartest brands do. Even, um, even the small indie brands that we worked with um, in the early days, like, I mean, we started working with Glossier in 2016 and they were very small at the time, but they, the reason why they supported us was because they believed so much in data. And I mean, look at them today, they're kind of the gold standard when it comes to Instagram and content marketing in general. Yeah, hmm. so data is, is important. Uh, we've got another question here from uh, the audience. Uh, and that is, do you tailor what determines successful engagement metrics to the specific branch? I think uh, to the specific brand. That's an interesting concept as well, because it's not always as simple as likes and comments and shares, right, on a brand by brand basis. So we do keep our engagement metric consistent. And that's, that's for the purpose of being able to compare your performance against, obviously, competitors' um, performance and really gain an insight into how well you're performing across the industry at large. Um, however, within our software, I mean, there's a number of metrics that you can use to inform yourself on how well your performance is in terms of engagement. Um, so engagement rate, that specific metric is consistent, but you can go into the platform and you can, I mean, we offer metrics like effectiveness rate, for instance, where instead of looking at likes and comments over your total following, we're looking specifically at your reach. So we're getting a sense of, of the people that actually saw your content, how many engaged. So there's different metrics available within the platform, but that engagement rate specific metric is consistent for the purpose of being able to compare yourself. As somebody who works in a very specific um, portion of marketing, like a fairly narrow field of yeah. marketing as a whole, 
I imagine that you and, and your group have uh, spent a lot of time thinking about how um, that, you know, these channels and, and how brands will use it will evolve in the long term. Any predictions around what, maybe not just from a visual style, uh, visual standpoint, or creative standpoint, but are there any predictions you have around where uh, social media goes from here to become effective again? Or Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on just the future of this uh, discipline? Well, right now, I mean, I think the biggest thing we're hearing from brands is video. Um, that's becoming more and more um, important. So we're working, I mean, a big focus for us this year is working on how we're gonna incorporate that into the platform um, and figuring out what that's gonna look like in terms of data, but I, I would say video is where all of the brands are kind of focused right now. And, at the, and so at the moment, just for clarity, does Vision watch videos? Not yet. Not yet. Just, just. There's a lot of data. <laughs> just and <videos>. pictures. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, I imagine that adds yeah. uh, one or two layers of complexity totally. into things. Totally. A lot of storage. Yeah, not yeah, and yeah. sound like you're, yes. you're now you're getting into a whole bunch of other uh, senses and things like that. Yeah, it's fascinating, and I think, you know, th maybe just an, one more question around, um, like, how this can apply for uh, the people in the room today. Um, if, if there is, like, one key here, um, is, is it ha does it have to do with uh, matching up with an audience? Like, it have, does it have to do with matching up with your specific audience? Um, like when you look at a campaign, when you look at or uh, an organic uh, 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 sort of monthly calendar mm -hmm. or something like that, is it super different what performs really well for brand by brand by brand? Like, is that what should people be just be thinking about what works for my audience rather than chasing down trends and that kind of thing? Yeah, so it's definitely first and foremost, you need to think about again what your own brand's DNA looks like. Um, and obviously that's, that's very important, but um, trends are obviously helpful in terms of understanding maybe the types of content strategy that you'd like to test, but that's where vision comes into play is, again, a couple years ago we were hearing from brands as mentioned that um, they wanted to test out new types of content and they were seeing trends and they wanted to test out the trends, but they didn't want to sacrifice engagement because what happens on Instagram is if your engagement dips, then um, your, the algorithm <laughs> pushes you down towards the bottom of, of people's feeds in the organic space. So brands are very um, focused on engagement. So that's kind of, that's partly why we built um, the solution is so that brands would be able to test content um, using vision. So take maybe a trend that they see, upload it into Dash Hudson and have vision give them some indication of whether or not that will work for their brand. It's a fascinating, fascinating solution to a problem that I have been ignorant to up until now, as is probably evident by me getting every single one of your questions wrong. Um, but thank you so much for uh, sharing today and for sort of uh, shining a bit of light on this. Um, I believe you guys are around uh, yes. today, tomorrow. Um, you've got some people uh, kicking around here. That, I do. Uh, Michaela and Julia, they're waving over there. We'll all be at the gala this evening. Wonderful. So, so if you find hi. them, Ask them questions and uh, get to know it. Thank you so much for sharing today. It's Thank wonderful. you.